Hey everyone, I'm Nate. And I'm Abby. This little guy's Popeye, and we're the RC Sailors at the airfield on a nice calm evening to fly a race drone for you guys, definitely on the hobby grade side. Uh, while Popeye runs around and has just a good old time, there's like no wind. This is just perfect. I'm so happy to be up here. This is called the Hubson H123D. It's completely ready to fly right out of the box. The only thing you'll need is either a rechargeable battery for your transmitter or four double A's. Now, a lot of people are gonna get a little bit upset with me when I say this, but newsflash to the RC world, even though we don't do a lot of race drones on our channel, race drones are not just for the professional drone pilot. If you're a beginner, a newbie, and you just fly toy grade stuff that costs 20 or $30, this stuff here is for you. So let's take a closer look, see what comes in the box really quickly, and then we'll talk more and fly this brand new drone from Hubson. Yeah, brand new drone from Hubson. As a matter of fact, this is only available currently on pre-order. It's not very often, if ever really, that we get something pre-release. We did agree to this to get good information to you guys. I'm happy to do this. So. We're very critical of anything we put on our channel, but even more so of something that was given to us. So know that going into this video. All right. Yesterday's video that we did, Don't we asked you guys, down. thumbs up, thumbs down, keep the mustache, mustache, shave the mustache. Let's see the stats. The results are in, to shave or not to shave. We had 431 thumbs up as of right now and 205 down. That's a lot of thumbs down for one of our videos to get rid of the mustache, but it stays for now. I think if you would have switched them, it would have been the gone. mustache would be gone and yeah. I'm kind of salty. We'll give it a week or so. We'll see how, how it goes and see what this can do in a week or two. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, and some of you guys were so brutal with your comments. Uh, Max Kielbasa says, great video. I was going to thumbs down it, but if you shave off your mustache, you might look like Abraham Lincoln with mange. No offense. How am I supposed to take no offense to that? You would look like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Kenneth Nutley. The mustache. I'm sorry. I thought your wife drew that on you while you were asleep. <laughs> to the drone, guys. This is a ready to fly unit. The great thing about it is it is a carbon fiber frame with brushless motors and it's a 5.8 gigahertz FPV setup. The camera does angle from negative eight degrees to 45 degrees so you can start nice and level for beginners. As you progress, you can go all the way up to 45 degrees of pitch. So it goes up pretty far. Now I looked online and I'm sorry, but because this is a pre-release probably, I couldn't find the size, pitch, or size and speed of these brushless motors. The props and the motors, I have no info on them. The stats of this just aren't very good right now. No, uh, I, I do know that this feels really good. It's not a cheap plastic. It feels almost like a dowel prop, but we'll test that. You do get four spares in this bag, but the, the brushless motors should be nice and zippy. Uh, they're claiming that this drone can fly on the included flight battery. That's two cells, 980 milliamps, at 7.6 volts, not 7.4, but actually 7.6 volts, which is weird, uh, 10 minutes. They're boasting a 10 minute flight time. Now, I've seen a bit of information online from a YouTuber. Uh, he's like a Hubson Q&A product test guy. He's not a reviewer, but he tests stuff. I'll link his channel in the, in the description box below. Um, he says that in his testing, they're not even getting close to 10 minutes, but they are exceeding most average race drone flight times. So that's really important. What they're doing to resolve that right now with the batch that will be shipping out on the pre-release, like if you did a pre-order, you do actually get a second flight battery at no additional cost. This whole setup comes in at $175 currently. That could change, but I think that's going to be pretty solid. The battery has a JST plug and a balance lead. You can charge this on a hobby grade charger, but it does come with a very nice little charger, although it was kind of trickly. Mine took a while to charge, like two or three hours. I think it says 180 minutes or something like that. Uh, so it was a pretty long charge time with a US plug, but you can get converters and adapters. Just plug in the balance lead there. You get a decent instruction manual 
And probably the best part about this setup is the transmitter. Now, I think it's nice to have a transmitter with a monitor like this because if you don't have goggles and you just want ready to fly, you have this. But once you get into the hobby and start progressing, it's much, much, much more immersive to use some goggles like these. These are still the original Quantum Cyclops goggles and the reason I like them is because they fit over my glasses. The goggles are not included in this. No goggles are. But these are very affordable at about $60 or $70. The version 2 are probably $80 or $90. We'll link some of those in the description box below too. And you can use something as expensive as Fat Sharks like Abby is using now. So you have are options. Are we using those to record um, today? Uh, we may be using the Fat Sharks to record because well, we could put a micro SD card in here to record, so we might do both uh, okay. just to see how the quality records on here. Okay. Also, you get your patch antenna. This says 5.8 gigahertz right there, and your transmitter says 5.8 gigahertz, so you know that's where it screws in. This is going to be for your video signal. Probably a patch antenna is not the best idea for this, but we'll use it because we've got our goggles anyway. This is just for receiving the video. And then this is the 2.4 gigahertz. It's labeled on the antenna. It's a pretty big antenna. And uh, labeled there. So that's just to give you longer range for the flight controls. Now I brought four AA batteries for my transmitter, but you do have the option, because it's gonna drain these super fast, like a few flights, they'll be dead. You can plug in, uh, somewhere in here, there's a JST plug. So you could probably use a flight battery or, or just use it to fly on. I'm gonna use my double A's. And then we have a lens hood for the transmitter. So if it's really bright out, which it's not right now, we can put that lens hood on here and block the sun a little bit. So that's, that's all that is. You just gotta assemble it. So this is gonna be a first impressions video. I am not going to tell you by the end of this video if you should or should not buy this. This is a pre-release thing. I'm not here to sell this for Hubson. I'm here to tell you guys if this is a good product worth your hard earned money or not. And I wanna show you guys that this is coming to the market. All I'm going to do is keep it, continue flying it if, it, if it does fly, have fun with it, test it some more, and when it gets close to the time where you can actually buy it, I'll do a follow-up video and then let you know my final thoughts on this. So let's fly it and get it in the air. Ready when you guys are. Popeye's super ready to fly. I'm gonna do a tiny short flight line of sight. You guys will still see video though because we're gonna record on Abby's Fat Sharks. And when I press record on this, you'll see that. So right now, Abby's Fat Sharks are recording. Let's They're take off. right there. Yes. Uh, let's fly. Down and out to start the motors. I am in, um, they call it manual mode. So let's see if it's auto level. Yeah. Manual mode is actually like, like flying a toy grade auto level six axis drone. I can push all the way over and let go of the right stick and it auto levels. So I'm going to fly a little closer just so you guys can see it in the air while Popeye has fun with that. He's so excited. It sounds awesome. It feels great. Let's do a throttle punch really quick while I have line of sight on it. You ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Wow. Oh my okay. gosh. Honestly, wasn't expecting <laughs> that. So that's cool. That's really cool. Um, I think we're ready to just fly line of sight. This is a race drone. It's not a toy grade drone, so let's fly it like a race drone. Should you hit record let's on Let's snap a photo first. Let's just okay. see what the picture quality looks like. I have the camera angled up, so you guys may just be looking. Yeah, you're just looking at the sun. But there's a photo, I hope. And let's go ahead and start doing the video on here. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> I have one quick indicator that says record and then no indicator on my screen. I'm gonna pull my goggles down. But we'll at least have the fat shark footage. There we go, goggles are on, looking good. A Little bit of jello. Uh, and this I'm gonna go. It's probably gonna be a lot of the FPV footage because this is so tiny and fast. I am I in, uh, what's the half mode called that's not totally acro, is but. Is horizon? Like a, what's it say on the transmitter? Can you see that? I have to stop filming it's okay. you. Sport mode is sport what it mode. Says. So let's see, do, can I do flips? Nope. Sport mode is like a taste of acro, but not totally there. Video quality is still good. Let's go right into acro. Okay, so this is gonna fly like a standard race drone. For anybody out there that is watching that just only flies race drones, now auto level should be totally off. We should be able to do flips and stuff. No, what is going on with that? So that's sport mode, right? Maybe I have to do it on the ground. Acro mode. Does it say acro? Yep. Okay, let's let's land it. I'm gonna go back up to auto level. I'm gonna land this. And then switch it. And switch it like that. 
I gotta pull my goggles up, land line of sight, and then we're gonna switch it on the ground. Maybe we can't switch it in the air, but that definitely was not accurate. So. Don't know. Now we're starting in acro. Let's see if it's truly acro. Ready to take off, Abby? Yep. Starting the motors. <laughs> what in the world? That is slow. Oh, I have dual rates too. Let's go higher rates. Maybe that'll help. Okay, so we're in the higher rate of dual rates. There's Popeye running. Good enough to see Popeye running. And let's do a flip. Okay, it works. I couldn't say if you got it. Oh my gosh. Oh, what just... I'm in Death Valley. What? That was uh, pretty sluggish. That was pretty sluggish. Oh man, we both have Grass is tall on. too. <laughs> Miraculously, he found it. Found it. I don't know how. No idea how. I mean, I was just standing right on it. Um, so what happened there really quickly? I tried to do a flip. It was very hard to recover. It's a lot slower than I expected it to be. I feel like it should be way snappier to do the flips, but that was my first one. So let's put it in the air before I'm too harsh on this. Remember, this is initial flights, so let's keep flying. It says acro, and it just doesn't feel like it. It feels like it's got some little bit of auto stabilization on auto level. Looks fine while I'm flying. Little bit of jello. Let's uh, let's do a flip. It's just a nasty. Did you do a flip? Yes, I did. I can't even see. It's so tiny. It's if you really did a flip. hard to recover, and just doesn't feel like I have total control over it. And the video latency, or not the latency. I'm sorry. The frames per second feel like they're about 20 frames per second, and it's it's just really hard to. It doesn't feel right. It just the right stick. Look, I push forward, and it kind of jerks back a hair. That is not acro. That's like assisted acro. I've never felt anything like that before. Is that it's the like highest a, mode? Yeah, and I have the highest rates on. Let's do one more. I'm gonna do a horizontal flip here. Okay, it is just the, the screen blacks out when I'm upside down a little bit. It's, it's, it's uh, just not meant to do flips. It's not meant to do flips. It's a struggle. It's it's more um, okay. it's more of a struggle than it is fun. And for a race drone, it should be fun, especially one like this that should be like a progressive race drone. Now let's let's go. I'm gonna go back up to auto <laughs> level and see if that is. Uh, can I switch modes while I'm flying? Yes, we're back in auto level. That's why it's really wobbly for you guys. I'm pushing forward a little bit, but see, when I go into acro mode, it you. does that too. I just turned around. I'm going from left to right. <laughs> it's it's you won't be able to see anything on the screen yeah, anyway it's just a um, it doesn't feel like true acro and it says acro on the screen it feels like assisted acro and i don't like it it does not feel right it feels like there needs to be a firmware update on the flight controls watch the building i'm going to fly up and just go left for a flip left and it's very sloppy it doesn't let me control the drone it has a little bit of weird assistance like a mind of its own what is going on I'm down. I'm down. I don't even know where you were. It's, I'm out in the field. It's fine. Similar situation as to when it crashed in the field. I'm getting the flip down, but I'm telling you, in acro mode, it feels like it has a mind of its own, a bit of assistance, and you don't want that in full acro mode. And I just want to give props <sighs> to Popeye because he found this one. <laughs> that was so that cool. Was, that was his pulse the in footage, that footage. <laughs> the footage that you guys are watching now is from Popeye running ahead, picking up the drone, and carrying it for me. That was amazing. <laughs> Thumbs up this video for Popeye doing that. That's so cool. What I'm doing now is flying in auto level mode. I want to stay above the tree line for you, Abby. So, is your transmitter still recording? I don't know because there's no indicator oh, okay. on the transmitter to tell me if I'm recording or not. That sharks are. There's an indicator that says, I know you hit the button, but then it goes away. Okay. And I don't like that at all. As, and uh, we're, we're really low on battery, so let's try to do a line of sight flip really quickly on high rates. This is a line of sight flip, guys, so bear with me. Way easier line of sight. I just yeah. did an acro line of sight and it felt great. I'm gonna do a couple more for you. If I kill the battery, it's okay. I'm just doing this for the video. Okay, so I don't like the video feed. And I also don't like that it has a slight auto level, um, even in acro mode. Let's do this again. This is 100% line no, of sight. That's really slow. It is slow, yeah. But on the FPV, it just felt so bad. I've got a low battery indicator there. 
on the drone or the transmitter. Your transmitter. Really faint beep. I hear it. Very, very faint. You want to do one more front flip? Okay, and now I hear one coming off the drone. Auto level, and let's land. That's our battery. And then down and out, stop the motors. Popeye did amazing in that video. The drone, I want to say it did, but I can't truly say that. So, I'm pretty sure they're still working some bugs out on this drone, which is one reason I don't like doing pre-release videos. I don't like getting a product before it's out because that means there still could be bugs. What's the point in really doing a video like this if you can't buy it, in my opinion? Um, I'm not a tester, more of a reviewer, kind of. Uh, and if I had to review this as is, I would tell you not to buy it. On the way up here, you mentioned uh, the Rodeo 110 by yes. Walkera that looks pretty similar yes. to this. I would, based on my experience, I would compare this to the Walkera Rodeo 110. It's relatively the same size and power. And same price. And in the same price range. The Rodeo 110 does not come without its own flaws. If you juice it hard, you lose video signal pretty bad and <clears throat> Uh, that's about it. That's about the only issue I had with it, but it was a blast. My mm -hmm. dad now owns that and loves it. He flies it line of sight all the time. Let's be, let's be very pro and con here because this deserves a lot of praise for what it is. I love that it's carbon fiber. It is tough as nails, including the props. I crashed it twice in that video, which I'm a little embarrassed by, uh, but I'm an honest guy. If I crash something, you guys know about it. You I'm, never crash FPV stuff. It, that's uh, it's, uh, yes, I do. Well, RCS Fest, I crash. That's all the time. race gate. It's going through gate. Okay, it's yeah, different. the time pressure was on. I just wanted to do a simple flip line of sight, and I can do that. Acro, air mode. I'm not a great pilot, but I can do that stuff. And uh, with this, the FPV signal quality was good. Picture quality was great. But when I was flying fast and doing my flips, it felt sluggish. I felt like there was a delay almost. Like the frame rate was low, like 20 frames per second or something, because it would flip. And then, then the camera, because it's angled up, was looking at the dark ground. And it basically looked like a black screen to me, which you probably have seen on the video. And then as I recover uh, in my flip, by the time I'm over, the colors are weird. I felt like I was past it. But then when I did my line of sight flips, it flew really, really well. So I think there's something going on with the video signal. Um, I think I got ticks and mosquitoes on me now because I had to go down in Death Valley to get this. <sighs> When's the last time I've crashed something in Death Valley? That should say something right there. Um, this is just a first impression video though. Uh, and the things that you guys need to take away from it, it was fun. It was hands down a blast to fly line of sight. FPV was great, but when I went into the advanced mode, uh, into acro mode and the high rate, it was very hard to do a flip while flying FPV. If anyone else out there doesn't come to that conclusion, it's one of two reasons. They might have something with an update, and I hope that would be the reason, or maybe they're just not telling the truth. Fortunately for you guys, we're one of the first videos out to have uh, this Hubson H123D. And I, I, I think that that'll be a really good slate to go off of. You know what I like about this drone? The numbers are easy to remember. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. D. Great. Good Got job. <laughs> Hubson. Um, you know, Hubson, you're onto a really awesome thing here. I like ready to fly race drones. I think that a lot of people are intimidated to get into race drones because Number one, there's not very many people out there saying, hey, buy this race drone, it's beginner friendly. Most people out there with race drones are saying, I'm really, really good at flying a race drone and I'm probably better than you and you'll never be as good as me, don't even try. And that's just the truth of the matter. They can be intimidating. Some of you have started from our channel and progressed into race drones and I applaud you and I think that everybody should eventually try a race drone. Is this the one for you? I don't know yet. I've got to fly it some more before I can give you my final review on this, my final, uh, you know, verdict. But the first impressions are it's a little scary. 
this would not be a very good beginner friendly drone if you wanted to fly acro fpv with your goggles and do flips now if you're going to fly auto level mode only and just go cruising around this is awesome the range was amazing i got all the way out to the corner i was able to use the fpv signal to know that i was getting close to my drone when it was in death valley i had no signal issues but once you get into the more advanced moves, which you can't even really call them super advanced, they're just flips and rolls and stuff. I didn't think that it was there. Um, 175 is not a bad price at all. We'll have it linked in the description box below where you can pre-order it. And in the next few days, I'll charge these batteries and do some more testing. And I will give you guys a final video, I promise. Even if I crash it and blow it up into a million pieces, we'll do a follow-up on this when it gets closer to the time that you can actually buy it. So, do you guys like the fact that we were able to get our hands on something early and give you guys a heads up as to what's coming to the market? There's not a lot of stuff that's ready to fly, carbon fiber, brushless, 5.8 gigahertz FPV. There's not a lot of stuff out there right now in that category. And we certainly don't do a lot of that on our channel. That type of drone, also getting it before you can actually buy it. So give us some feedback. Let us know what you guys think because this is a little bit different uh, I enjoyed it. I like being able to bring that stuff to you, but let us know. We'll have everything linked below. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.